This video is a series of exercises and drills designed for someone brand new to the sport of cross-country skiing in either the skate or classic style. You can do all these drills on either type of equipment. After working through this lesson plan, you'll feel comfortable on your skis and able to move around safely on both the flats and the hills. I'll focus on basic skills. This lesson does not teach any of the classic or skate specific skiing techniques. Rather, it will do things like teach you how to manage obstacles and get up and down hills. After working through these activities, you'll be in a better position to learn skate or classic skiing because you'll have a good foundation in place and you'll feel relaxed and confident on your skis. If you have previous experience, perhaps with downhill skiing, you'll be able to work through these drills in about an hour. Without previous experience in sliding sports, it will likely take longer. There are about 20 drills in this video. We'll start on the flats and then move to a hill. There's a link in the description below this video that takes you to our website, Nordic Ski Lab. Dot com. There you'll find this same video, but with jump links to make it easier to navigate through the lesson. I'll also provide a free downloadable version in case your ski area doesn't have Wi-Fi. Before you head out onto the snow, check your gear. Do you know how to attach your boots to your bindings? There are different systems and not all boots and bindings work together. Do your skis need wax? Do you know how to put on your poles? It's best to figure these things out before you go. Regarding safety, it's not common to get hurt cross-country skiing, but it's also not risk-free. So, as with any sport, you need to exercise caution and work within your limits. You are the only one who can decide what's safe for you. Be careful walking on cross-country ski boots because they can be slippery, especially in an icy parking lot. Also, if you are a downhill skier, don't be overly confident when you get to the hills. Skiing downhills on cross-country skis will be a different experience from what you're used to because the gear is much less stable. It's better to be extra cautious at the beginning until you get a sense for the equipment. Okay, so now we're ready to head out onto the snow. Your skis might be held together with a ski tie, but if they're not, hold them like this with their sidewalls together and hold your poles in one hand and your skis in the other. You'll put your skis on first and your poles on second, and you need to use your poles to help you get your skis on. So use one pole to support yourself and then the second pole you want to flip that one around because you're going to use the tip of it to help clean out the snow in your boots as you walked on the snow though some snow will probably have jammed into that space where the binding and the boot need to connect together and you need to clear that snow out or the boot will not connect with the binding so clear out all the snow and here the snow is well groomed and very dry so she can set her boot back on the snow without getting more jammed in. But if you're um, in deeper snow or wetter snow, you might need to step directly onto the binding, put one ski on and then clear out the other one and put it in. When it comes time to attach the bindings, there are different systems. So in this case, these bindings have a lever that you turn to connect the binding. So there, now the binding is connected. And usually when you're putting the boot on, you need to lift the heel up. So notice how she's got her heel raised at the back. That makes it easier to connect the boot to the binding. And then in this example, these bindings have more of a lever. Again, she lifts her heel up and then she locks the lever down and that holds the boot in place. And you just wanna test that you actually connected your boot to your binding. If your poles have a simple loop strap, there is no right or left, but if they have a harness, like you're seeing in this example, then there is a right and a left ski pole. And you'll notice on the harness, there's a spot where the thumb goes through. So there's usually a smaller hole for the thumb, and then the hand goes through the wider opening, and then there's a strap to hold it in place. Um, the, the poles will be marked with a right and left marking so that you know which which pole is which you can see the marking on this pole here 
So the first thing to do is just to kind of flex up and down on the skis and start to get the feeling for what it feels like to stand on the skis. This position here um, we refer to as the athletic stance or the ready position where we're hinged into the hips and softly flexed through the knees and ankles. That's a very uh, classic position that we use in cross-country skiing. So it's good to start to get used to moving in and out of that position. Uh, you can do it uh, this is Emily in the purple jacket, and she is demonstrating on skate gear, and the other skier was Daria. She's demonstrating on classic gear. So if you're on skate gear, you might want to do like Emily has done here and take more of the V shape that with the skis. So this is what we refer to as a V shape, and that's how the skis are positioned when you're skate skiing. Regardless of whether you're on skate or classic skis, all cross-country skis have a flexed shape to them where the tips and tails are more connected to the ground. And if the skis fit you properly, this there'll be a space between the ski and the snow under the foot because of that bow-like shape to the ski. So you can just start to press your foot up and down on the ski to get a sense of the kind of bounce that you have in a ski and get a sense of how much it will take to push that ski flat against the snow because you'll need to flatten out the skis later when you do start to learn classic and skate techniques. Chances are good that you will eventually fall and so it can be a good idea to practice getting up when you're in this cold, controlled situation at the start of your ski. Um, and it's a good idea to take your poles off when you're getting up because if you don't, you risk breaking the poles. The most important thing to remember when you're getting up is that you bring your weight forward and you put your hands ahead of your feet. You don't want to get up with your weight back or the skis will just shoot away on you. Sometimes um, you might fall and get your gear all tangled up, especially if you fall into deeper snow. So if your skis and your poles are tangled up, just lay on your back and um, put your skis up in the air and your poles up in the air and just kind of straighten everything out, tip it over onto the side and then get yourself up the same way that you did before. Okay, the next activity is just stepping from ski to ski and kind of balancing and bouncing on one ski and then the other. Uh, balance is a really important element of cross-country skiing and in all cross-country ski techniques we often spend a lot of time on one ski or the other so starting to challenge yourself to develop your balance is a great idea even on your first day and again you can see that when she's doing this activity she's got that uh, flexed and forward position that I mentioned earlier. So if you can keep some flexion at the hips, knees and ankles, it'll be easier for you to keep your balance because you'll be able to respond to loss of balance more easily. Okay, this is a favorite drill for beginners. It's called a star turn and you just are going to turn yourself around in a circle by separating the tips of the skis apart with each step but the tails of the skis stay together and that'll take you around in um, in what we call a star turn and you can do that in one direction and then the other this shape that the skis make this is as I said earlier this we call a V shape and we use that shape in skate skiing but we also use it in uh, classic skiing and skate skiing on uh, for a technique that we use on downhill turns called a step turn. So it's good to start to teach yourself how to work the skis this way. And then you can do this star turn activity um, in a related way where you take the skis instead of into that um, V shape, you're going to take them into a wedge shape. And in that case, you separate the tails of the skis apart with each step. So do you see how with each step he's swinging the tail of his skis apart? The ski moved in that direction and that took the skis into this a wedge shape and that's an important shape because we use that to control our speed in a, a snow plow. Okay so you should feel pretty good on your skis now and now we're going to learn a technique for moving forward. 
Um, this is a classic skiing technique called double pole, but I chose it because you can do it on skate or classic skis. If you are on classic skis, you might find it easier just to kind of walk your skis forward. But I do recommend that you try this technique because it's a, it teaches you a lot of important skills that will really help your skiing. So uh, in double pole, you're going to push yourself forward with both poles at the same time. And we don't push with the skis just with the poles. So for this technique, you want to make sure that you've got your arms well bent and your hands close to your face. If you reach the arms and poles far away from the body, it'll be harder for you to get leverage and make this work. Uh, plant the tips of the pole of the poles in the ground just ahead of the boots and then when you want to move forward don't push down into the ground with the poles instead think about levering yourself over the poles so you want to take advantage of the leverage property of the poles then when it comes time to actually pushing um, we do bend in that same way through the hips, knees, and ankles. So you're gonna see how she flexes down as she does each pull stroke. So let that play for a bit so you can see what it looks like. Uh, regarding that movement through the body, you can think about it um, from the, if you think about a bowing action. So imagine that you were only going to fold through the hips. That would be like you were bowing forward or imagine that you were sitting down in a chair into this kind of a shape. Double pulling is not either one of those. It's somewhere in between those two movements. So see how her hips are going to travel down and back and then up and forward. So watch the direction the hips move. See that? And then at the same time, you need to keep this flexion in the knees and the knees pressing forward. So you're not going to master double pull your first day on skis, but um, you should be able to learn it well enough that you can use it to help yourself move forward. You can see your hands are a bit, are approximately shoulder width apart with the elbows a little wider there. Okay, so you've learned how to move forward. The next skill we're gonna work on is uh, learning how to come to a stop. And for that, you're gonna learn a snow plow. And a snow plow requires an action with the skis um, where we scrape the skis over the snow. So the ski is gonna have to roll onto its inside edge and that edge is going to scrape across the surface of the snow. So you can get a sense of what that feels like just by standing in place like Daria is um, demonstrating here and pushing sideways with each step. Now, when she was doing this, she's pushing the skis out and they're staying parallel. So she's pushing the tips and tails equally. But in snow plowing, you're going to need to um, do it a little bit differently. So in a snow plow, you're going to push more through the heels so that the tail of the ski swings further out than the, t than the tip of the ski. So that's what the action looks like. And you can practice it in place just like you did before. You want the tail of the ski to swing around. Just practice it with one ski and then the other. Okay, we're ready to do a snow plow now. Usually we snow plow on a downhill, but to make this easy, we're going to first learn this skill on the flats, but you do need to build up a little bit of speed for this to work. So um, if the snow is nice and level, it won't matter which direction you go, but if there is a little bit of a slope one way or the other, make sure that you're working down the slope so that you can build up a little bit more speed. And you just use your double pulling skills, build up some speed. Once you have some speed, you do that movement where you pushed out through the tails of each ski so that the skis went into this wedge shape. And the main thing that you want to watch for here is what's happening at the tips. You don't want the tips to cross over each other. There always needs to be a little distance between them. And then you'll see it from the front direction. Notice how the tails of the skis swing apart from each other and the skis will be rolled onto their inside edges and they'll be scraping across the snow like you learned earlier. 
Okay, this next drill is called snowplow bubbles. And what you're gonna do is just practice controlling your speed by alternating between double pulling and snow plowing. So you build up some speed, practice stopping or slowing down, and then build up some more speed. So the skis work from being in a parallel shape to being in a wedge shape. And then you can see that same drill from the front position. By this point, you should be feeling very confident in your ability to control your speed. Okay, the next drill is called a snowplow turn. And if you can do a snowplow, you can do a snowplow turn because all that happens in a snowplow turn is instead of pushing out the tail of both skis at the same time, you just push one at a time. So if you watch this ski on this side, watch the tail of that ski, it swings out and do you see how that made her turn in the opposite direction? So that's how a snowplow turn works. You just push with one ski and then you will turn in the other direction. And now you can see it from the side so you can start to link your turns together. At a Nordic ski area, there will be places where the snow is groomed flat and it's wide open for skate skiing and other places where there is a track laid in the snow for classic skiing. And regardless of whether you're on skate or classic skis, you need to learn how to negotiate these tracks. And that's what we're going to do now. So all of the um, activities in this next section will be done um, at, with the tracks in mind. So the first thing to learn is just how to ski across them and that's pretty simple. You just want to make sure that you bring the skis at enough of an angle that they don't drop into the um, track or get caught in the track. And then the next thing you're going to do is practice stepping in and out of the tracks both in place and in motion. So starting in place, it's always the ski that's uh, closest to the track. You reach it over and land it in the far track, and then you step the second ski in place. All right, so she's double pulling now in the track. So this is the same as before, just practicing your double pulling skills, but now in the tracks. And then once you've got that, start lifting one foot and the other because um, you're going to need to do that in order to step in and out of the tracks. This skill of practicing lifting one foot or the other is always a good idea, whether you're in the tracks or out of the tracks. Um, there's a lot of times when you need to pick up your feet in cross-country skiing, so it's a really good idea to get comfortable with this as well. Okay, so now she's going to show you um, stepping out of the track while she's in motion. So you build up a little bit of speed in the track and then step out. And again, it's the whichever side you're stepping to, the first step is quite easy, getting the first ski out, but you need to have a bigger step across with that second ski so it doesn't get stuck in the tracks. That's the tricky part. And that's the, now this is the opposite skill. So in the previous example, you saw her in the tracks uh, practicing stepping out, and now she's in motion practicing stepping in. So the steps over to the far track, steps in, and then carries on. When we were recording this video, it was quiet at the Nordic Center and there weren't very many skiers around and she had a good sense of what was around her. But when you are practicing this skill, it's really important for you to be aware of other skiers behind you. And when you're going to step into a track, you want to do a shoulder check, just like if you were in a car and make sure no one is approaching from behind. And that's true whether you're stepping into the tracks or if you're stepping out of the tracks. You need Need to always be aware that someone could be coming up behind you. Learning to step in and out of the tracks when you're in motion is one of the most important safety skills for you to develop and you want to keep practicing this well beyond your first day on skis. Um, you need to be able to do this at any point in time when you're out on the ski trails. So one of the um, most risky situations for a new skier to be in is when their skis are in the track and they come to a hill and they start to build up more speed than they're comfortable with and they'd like to get into a snow plow but their skis are in the track and they're unable to get into that snow plow position so you you don't want to ever get yourself into that position and that's why this is a good skill to work on right from the get-go 
Okay, so now we're into the third and final set of drills, and these are all done on the hills. So in this situation, you want to be um, on a hill where it's not too steep, and hopefully there's a gradual outrun so that you know that the skis will slow down naturally, even if you don't feel like you're able to control your speed. Um, it's nice that the snow is well groomed, like you see in these examples. So a wide, well groomed slope is ideal. The first skill we're going to work on is called sidestepping, and you can use this skill for going up and down hills. You roll the skis onto the same edge, so both the right and left ski are rolled over onto the same edge, and then you just take these parallel steps, and you can you edge the ski into the upslope so that the ski doesn't slide, and you just practice walking up and down the hill. And now you can see the same thing on an actual hill. So you can take big steps, you can take little steps, you can go up and down hills with this technique. And a variation of sidestepping is called side slipping. And in this case, you are adjusting how much that edge, so the up slope edge of the ski is kind of tilted and biting into the snow a little bit. And you just uh, change the angle so that the ski goes flatter against the snow and when it's flatter it'll start to slide for this skill you need um you need you might need more of a slope like a steeper slope it'll be easier to side slip on so it's a little bit awkward on this gentle slope but in this next example, it's a steeper hill and you can see how easily the skis will slide down the hill. So again, this is similar to that snow plowing where the skis are scraping across the snow and it's a really valuable skill for you to practice and get a sense of you're going to need to understand how the skis can make that scraping action for other skills later. Okay, so now we're going to go up the hill and um, instead of keeping going down the hill in a sidestep, we're going to do it with the skis pointing down the hill and do our first run. So you sidestep up the hill and then turn so that the uh, skis are now pointing down the hill, the tips are pointing down the hill. And now the, you're going to need to use your the tips of your ski poles to hold yourself in place so you don't slide away. And hold yourself in place and get yourself into position and then when you feel comfortable you can transition into this downhill stance she's on a gentle hill so she added a little bit of a pull push you might need to do that if the skis don't start to run right away for going downhills this is the basic position that we hold our our bodies in flexed through the hips, knees, and ankles, and the hands are forward. You want to keep your weight a little bit forward. What you don't want is for your weight to fall back and the skis to move forward, or you'll drop back onto your bottom. A lot of people are um, are really nervous about downhills on cross-country skis. So there are a few adjustments that you can make to your position if you're in a situation where you're feeling unsafe. So the first thing you can adjust is the width of your stance. So if you widen your legs further apart, you'll increase your base of support and improve your stability. And you can also um, tip them into a little bit of that wedge shape that we use in a snow plow and do a very wide snow plow and that will also help to control your speed another thing you can do is keep yourself in a lower position so the lower you are the more stable you'll be and then another um, area of adjustment that you can play around with is the position of the hands so if you reach the hands further forward and keep the hands wider apart while you're in this uh, low position with your feet wide you'll be very stable and then if you're ever in a situation where you absolutely do not feel like it's safe for you to ski down the hills, there's no shame in taking your skis off and walking down the hills. Just be aware that the boots can also be slippery. Okay, so on your first run, you can either keep the skis parallel and pointing down the hill and just wait for them to slow naturally, or you can work into a snowplow like Daria is going to do here. So the tails swing apart, Again, the main thing to watch for is that those tips don't cross over in front over each other, and then she can bring herself to a stop. 
Notice she never stood up, so she always kept this flexed position with her hands forward. Now, if you fall on the hill, um, the most common problem that people get into when they're trying to get up again on the hill is they'll do what Daria is demonstrating here, where her tips are pointing down the fall line and she's trying to get up with her weight behind her body or behind her feet. So if you'll remember earlier, I said that it was important to bring the hands in front of the feet when you're getting up. So in this example, you can see what happens if you try to get up with your weight behind you and your skis pointing downhill. She eventually does it, but that's not the best way to get up on the downhills. Instead, this is what you want to do. You put the skis across the fall line. And again, you need to dig, th keep that inside edge or the uphill edge of the skis biting into the snow a little bit and bring your hands and your weight forward as you get up. And see how she has so much more control now? You get up and your skis stay in place. They don't slip away on you. Okay, so we... Um, started off by sidestepping up the hill, but this technique for climbing uphill is a lot more efficient, and this is called herringbone. And um, we're also using the edges of the skis. So the skis are now in that V shape, and you've roll, you're rolling the inside edge of the ski so that it bites into the snow. And you just um, with the skis in that shape, you just walk up the hill using the arms and legs opposite to each other. You'll feel the natural way of doing that. Um, do you see how a lot of times people are worried about what will happen with the tails of their skis because they cross over, but you can see that they'll just naturally weave over each other. So you don't need to worry about them. They'll take care of themselves. Another skill um, that I don't actually have a clip of to show you, but that you can think about is um, when you're herringboning up a hill, this this V shape, if it's a very steep hill, you need to go make the skis into a wider V shape. And if you're on a trail where it's very um, narrow, you might have to use one of your skis in more of a V shape. So you can adjust your skis. You might have to keep one of them pointing more uphill and then put the other one at a slightly different angle. We're always improvising in cross-country skiing because the snow and trails and everything is, there's so many variables in this sport. So this is definitely a sport where um, improvisation is encouraged. So we're going to go downhill again. And this time, so when you came up and you were sidestepping, you were already in this position and all you had to do was point your, your tips down the hill. But when you're in a herringbone, now you're going to have to swing around. And this is a little bit of a trickier maneuver. Um, it's easy on a slope like this, but on a steeper slope, you might have some trouble with it. And then same as before, you use the tips of the poles to stop yourself from slipping away while you get the skis into position. Flex in the hips, knees and ankles, bring the hands forward and then let yourself start to run down the hill. And then I'll just show you that one more time from a different angle. So you see she herringbones up the hill, then she has to swing her skis all the way around. So they're pointing down the hill, uses her tips to control her position, and then sets herself off onto the downhill and goes into a snowplow to stop. Okay, just like we did on the flats, we're going to do snowplow bubbles again on the uphills. So now you're just learning again to control your speed by changing the, the shape of the skis from the parallel position to the wedge shape. So in this position, you will build up more and more speed. And in this position, you will control your speed. So you just want to practice going in and out of those shapes. And then just like on the flats, you can do snowplow turns on the hills. So she's, if you look at the ski, she's swinging this ski out and that is causing her to turn in that direction. So just start by doing one broad sweeping turn across the hill in both directions. And then once you've done that kind of C-shaped turn, one big C-shaped turn, here it is from a different angle, then you can start to link the turns together and do more of an S turn. 
So now in this example, she's starting to link the turns together. You can see you can just sweep your way across the hill from side to side. I apologize for the quality of this clip. It's a little darker than I would like. Um, you can see that there are classic tracks over here. It's harder to see, but there are classic tracks over here as well. And what we're demonstrating in this clip is how you can control your speed if you are going down the hill in the classic tracks by taking one ski out. So he's taking his the this ski on this side out and he's putting it into a, a wedge shape so this is a way of controlling your speed without stepping completely out of the tracks again this is a great skill to practice so that you don't end up in a situation where you're on a downhill with your skis trapped in the tracks and you're going faster than you feel comfortable with and again you want to practice setting the ski back in place as well Okay, you have a good collection of skills now. This final skill is more of a bonus skill um, because it'll challenge your balance and agility a little bit. It's called a kick turn and it's, it's basically almost never used, but it's a fun skill to learn. So we would use this on a hill. So imagine that you're on a hill and you've, you've come to the edge of the slope and you wish that your skis were pointing in that direction and you don't really have the space to do a full turn around. You can do this kick turn. And what you do is you take this down, down slope ski, ski and you're going to lift it up and swing it around so it's pointing in the other direction and you're going to have to negotiate the space between the poles and the skis obviously to give yourself some space to do that and then rearrange the poles and swing the second ski around and now you're facing in the new direction and then just practice it in both both ways okay and here's an example of using the kick turn on a hill so you come to the edge of the trail and then you reposition that down slope ski so that it's pointing in the opposite direction, move your poles around, swing the other ski around, and now you're facing in the new direction, and you can start to traverse the hill back in the other direction. Congratulations, you made it through your first day on cross-country skis. You're all set to start learning the various skate and or classic ski techniques. If you enjoyed this video format for learning, check out our website nordicskilab.com. We have a wide collection of videos of expert skiers demonstrating technique, as well as technique explainer videos and many drills. We have other free resources like this and you can help support us and access everything with a subscription. The cost is nominal and our members say we offer great value. I hope to see you there.